learners, I am Dr. Prerna Mandhyan, working as an assistant professor in Department of Education, DS College, Kitihar. Today we are going to discuss a very important topic that is what is learning, meaning and dimension of learning. So firstly, what is learning? Learning is not something that is going to be done within the boundaries of the classroom. It can be from anywhere, anytime and from anyone. Even in the Indian traditional literature, we can find that the people learn from the trees, river, waters, etc. In education, if we delimit our the learning definition, we can see that the a process of behavior modification through experience, exercise and efforts. In these lines, we can found that in learning, the modification of behavior is necessary which can be done through the experience, exercise and efforts. If we go to the definition of Herlock, we can find that the learning is development that comes from exercise and efforts. Through learning, children acquire competence in using their hereditary resources. Herlock in his research has done extensive work on the hereditary characteristics. He find that hereditary characteristics affects the learning. Even in his definition, he said that continuous efforts and consistently practice make the learnings more effective. Next definition is given by the Hilgard, Atkinson and Atkinson. Learning may be defined as a relatively permanent change in behavior that occurs as a result of prior experience. In their definition, they said that the change through the learning should be permanent. Not any temporary change be considered as a learning. In the upcoming slides, we discuss that every change or the every modification is not considered as a learning. Second important things, what the Hilgard, Atkinson and Atkinson said that the modification of behavior would happen as the result of prior experience. Whatever the experience the learner already have, it, al it always affects the learning process. A different definition is given by the Woodworth. Any activity can be called learning so far as it develops the individual in any respect, good or bad, which makes it different from the other definitions and makes him alter behavior and experience different from what they would otherwise have been. According to Woodworth, the changes or the modification in behavior comes after learning is not only come in the positive side, it could be the negative side too. This definition of Woodworth is different from the above mentioned different as Woodworth has described the changes in both the directions the positive and in the negative directions. If we analyze the above mentioned definitions, we can find that learning is not acquired by birth, but it is the process of acquiring competence by using hereditary resources as Herlock in his definition explained that learning does not happening by the birth, it is acquired competency and as Herlock has said that the hereditary resources are playing an important role in learning. Second important point we find that the temporary change in behavior is not learning. Permanent change should be in behavior visible then we considered it as a learning. Learning lead to change in behavior but does not necessarily mean that these changes always bring about improvement or positive development as lastly, Woodworth in his definition explained that the change in the behavior or the modification in the behavior should not always lead to the positive side or any improvement. It comes to the negative point too. Now the next question is, unlearning is itself a learning? Smith in his definition said that learning is the acquisition of new behavior or the strengthening or weakening of old behavior as a result of experience. Again, experience is very important. But here, Smith want to say that it's not necessary that in learning we always acquire something new. Sometime to abandon the old behavior, 
some time to forget the our weak behavior is also considered as learning so if we uh, if we follow the path of the smith we can say that unlearning is also a learning next question is learning is a process or is a product according to fagin learning is a sequence of mental events or conditions leading to changes in the learner it means fagin want to say that learning is a process in which different mental conditions or events can bring the changes in the learner we can see this process in this figure that firstly acquisition of new experience according to fagin learning is a process and in this process the first step is the learner is going to acquire something new some new knowledge some new experience some new facts anything second step the retention of old experience in the form of impressions or the skills first if the learner is acquired something new then there would always be the effect of prior or the previous experience on the learners so while acquiring the new experience the students always detain or the retain the old memories or the old experience or the skill the third point is the development and modification of experience after these two steps it means the new one and adjusting in the previous one the learner develop a new experience or modify his behavior or change come in its experience the fourth step that the growth and increase in these experience if the learner is changing his behavior or doing some modification in his experience definitely somewhere growth and experience will be increased then the creation of new experience will be come and lastly the synthesis and organization of the old and the new experience not only this how the learner will managing the new experience with the older one how he is synthesizing the students is synthesizing all the new and the previous experience come to the lastly as a learner so we can conclude that according to fagin learning is a process all the behaviors are not attributable to the learning as the first one is the reflex action such behavior is instinct and we even do not feel that we are putting in any special efforts for examples when a pin pricks our finger we withdraw it from the pin when a bright light falls on our eyes we immediately close our lids there is a different type of instincts which are also not attributed to the learning the biological instincts such behavior is natural and we do not learn it we inherited it by the birth like child start crying when he or she feels hungry and there is nothing that should be learnable secondly when we feel tired we prefer to rest so the reflex actions and the biological as instincts both behaviors are not considered as a learning there are some more behaviors which are not attributable to the learning like modifications or change in behavior takes place due to accident or psychological defects excluded from learned behavior for example like stammering through the effect of any accident or the psychological effects it's not considered as a learning learned behavior beside these there are some other motor behaviors which a child can perform only at a certain age is also not included in learned behavior like the for example the child sitting in a proper pose posture the child started walking the child started running these are some behavior motor behavior which the child is learning at a certain age but it is also not con concluded in a learned behavior the behavior which is the outcome of maturity of the child is not called learned behavior however sometimes it becomes very difficult to determine between maturity and learning which is responsible for the behavior as we already said that the maturity of the child is not considered as a learning behavior now the nature of learning learning is a process and not a product 
if we consider learning as a product it becomes an external part of the educational process but learning is a process which is the internal part like paul freire in his book pedagogy of the oppressed said that if we knowledge or the education is not something like that if we go for the shopping and we get the knowledge and collect it in this concept of banking education the students become depositors and the teacher become depositories so the paul freire has completely condemned that learning is a product the paul freire is always preferencing that the learning is a process and not a product second the learning is purposive or goal directed learning could not be aimless learning should always have some purpose or it direct to the some goals or the some destinations like preparing the lesson plan the teacher always set some objectives that should be fulfilled after the teaching so learning is a purposive or a goal directed thirdly learning generally involves some degree of permanence as we already discussed that any temporary behavior the motor behavior the reflex actions or the biological instincts are not considered in the learning only there should be a some change of with a permanence is considered as a learning then the learning is universal and continuous we learn from our birth to the till death and approaches of learnings are very universal and can be generalized so we can say that learning is universal and continuous process next the learning prepares for adjustment even is a rough saying we hear that always educated persons are more adjustable in this reference if we consider that learning prepares for adjustment learning Uh, learning make the students more adjustable to the complex situations or the conditions next learning is comprehensive learning is not a simple term it has cognitive affective and psychomotor domain which develops among the students next learning is change in response or behavior may be favorable or unfavorable as Wood Smith in his definition said that the changes or the modification in behaviors does not always lead to the favorable or the improvement sometimes it has some negative impacts too learning is an organizing experience we learn by step and step or the systematic way instincts and reflexes are not learning learning does not include changes in behavior already we said that there should be some modification or change in behavior but that should be permanent not the temporary one now the next topic of our discussion is the dimension of learning learning has different aspects as marzonek has said uh, dimension of learning is a comprehensive model that uses what researchers and theorists know about learning to define the learning process as we have discussed that learning is a comprehensive term so if we discuss about the dimension of learning we find that the different researches and the theorists support that the learning have different dimensions and different things to define as a learning process the first one is the attitude and perception positive attitude and perception about classroom and learning which affects the learner's ability to learn as researchers said that there is always a positive relationship between the teacher attitude and the students perception if students have a better perception about their teachers there should be a positive learning if learners find the classroom as an unsafe and disorderly place their learning will be negatively affected it's all about the perception of the students as we said that the physical layout of the classroom like the seating arrangement availability of the light or the cleanliness of the room classroom should uh, should be very uh, appreciable otherwise the learning will be negatively affected the next topic is acquire and integrate knowledge the first thing is 
as we discuss about in the learning process that the students will acquire new knowledge and then it integrates the new knowledge with the previous experiences like providing new knowledge by integrating the previous knowledge helps in learning organizing the new information with our already known facts must be guided to make it the part of their long term memory as we uh, as we study in the piaget's theory that the student makes some adjustment in the new knowledge and the previous knowledge so organizing the previous knowledge with the new one should be guided by a teacher properly to make that memory to make that learning long term memory next is extent and refine knowledge learners develop an in depth understanding through the process of extending and refining their knowledge learning is a process is a lifelong process from birth to the till death so the learner is always extending their knowledge in the different manners so various reasoning processes through which the students can extend and refine their knowledge are like comparing the students can compare one content to the another the psychomotor domain with the affective domain the cognitive domain with the psychomotor domain secondly classifying the students can classify the contents in a different categories through which they can easily extend and refine their knowledge like if we talk about the school of philosophy of education so then students can classify naturalism idealism humanism and through which they can easily grasp the content abstracting like in the edgar dale's cone of experience starting from the concrete to the abstract in the same way the teacher can use the way from concrete to the abstract and the students can extend and refine their knowledge the inductive and deductive reasoning are also very important for the students to refine their knowledge and lastly the analyzing errors like in english the students are given some assignments to detect the grammars in sentences so through which the students can extend and apply their knowledge to refine their knowledge use knowledge meaningfully everything whatever the student gain through teaching or through the self study that should be very meaningful and the students has the capacity to implement it or the apply it in a different situation the most effective learning occurs when we use knowledge to perform meaningful task for this reasoning processes are like the decision making in management courses the students are given assignments if they are in marketing just go and to sell any product in the same way the students has the power of decision to how to sell it at what price to sell it so these are the things the students learn in the class and make it practice through their assignments on any project the problem solving way the investigation and the system analysis these are the different reasoning processes through which the learners can use their knowledge very meaningfully or apply their knowledge in the practical way now the habits of mind a learner become effective learner by developing powerful habits of mind that enable her or him to think critically do think creatively and regulate her or his behavior like it is the capability of the learner that how creatively or how critically the students are doing any task any assignment and how they are regulating or the controlling their behavior the habit of preserving pushing the limits of own knowledge and abilities generating trusting and maintaining own standards of evaluation enable in thinking creatively like in the evaluation process not only the teacher even even sometime the student should have the chance or the teacher should give the chance to the students to evaluate themselves how they are dealing with the assignments themselves how they are uh, how they are completing their task in a different way so the knowledge and the abilities or different different uh, different uh, trusting ways the teachers can use to the for the students to maintain the standards of evaluation if regulated thinking is enabled 
by the habits of monitoring own thinking, planning appropriately, identifying and using resources, responding appropriately to feedback and evaluating the effectiveness of own actions. As I already told you that the students should identify what are the objectives of their task, what are the necessary resources through which they can complete their task, what are the feedbacks the teachers are giving in completing the process and how the evaluation process is going on to make the effective uh, actions of the students. So in this discussion, we have discussed about what is learning and what are the dimensions of learning. Different definitions given by the psychologist and educationist we have discussed here, but the one different definition we find by the Wood Woodworth that, uh, that the learning does not lead always positive or the improvement, it always have some negative impact too. After that, we have discussed that unlearning is itself a learning. What, does, what is learning? Is a product or a process? As the view given by the Fagin, learning is a process. And lastly, we have discussed different dimensions of learning. I hope this discussion will help you in your reading. Thank you.